Welcome in to the John Cast Podcast. Thanks for listening. It's time for the Kelly Sheffield Show with the Badgers head coach, Kelly Sheffield. How's it going, coach? Uh, great, great morning, great afternoon, wherever we're at. Hi. Yeah. Hey. Um, so I guess we'll start with 0-3 <laughs> right off the bat. Uh, but you, your message is the sky isn't falling. You said that on the postgame show after Stanford. Uh, what is the message to the team after an 0-3 start? I don't want to sound like Aaron Rodgers with the spelling out the word relax, but it's a, um, I mean, it's, it, it, what are we trying to do here? You know, there's a little bit of perspective of, of wh where do we want to be by the end of the year and, and how do we, how do we grow into that? And, and, uh, we've been a part of, um, you know, there's some, uh, a lot to be, there's a lot of meat on the bone there to get better is one of the things I will say, you know, we've, uh, we played three matches against teams ranked in the top six, uh, pretty challenging schedule out, out of, out of the gate. We've out hit two of our three opponents and still have lost those matches. Those are things that are, uh, it doesn't happen very much. We've lost three sets where we've out hit our opponents. That's kind of a little bit unusual. We're one in five in sets decided by three points or less uh, so we've we've got to close got to close sets off uh, a little bit better than than what we have um you know we uh, health has been an issue for for us some kind of random things that have kind of made training difficult and so for some of our players and some of our connections it has been a learn as we go fix it as we're playing against elite competition. That makes it a little bit more challenging. Certainly we're not the only team that is in that space, but, but uh, that is a reality for us. And, and um, uh, you know, and there's a lot of areas that we can be a lot better at. Um, we are hitting the same uh, in three options as what we did last year against our entire uh, schedule last year versus our three elite teams. So that uh, so that we're hitting at a very, very high clip in three option scenarios. We've got to be better in transition, much better in transition, much better in medium pass situations. And uh, those will be areas of focus. Um, kind of kind of coming forward now you touched on a couple of things that i i, I want to ask you about we'll get to that but also just i think it's a reminder to fans too that volleyball is volleyball and and upsets and and things like that occur i mean you just look at nebraska lost to smu in three sets i'm not sure too many people predicted that i know louisville a team that you just played lost in three sets as well recently so um not only is the level of competition there but I mean, there are a lot of good teams in volleyball and a lot of good teams like Nebraska and Louisville lose early in the season, too. Well, yeah, I mean, that's uh, w winning is hard. I think Carter was talking about that at the press conference afterwards. It's just it's it's hard. And uh, sometimes when you when you're winning a lot, uh, it, it can be uh, it, it's it's not our God given right to <laughs> to to win. And uh, you've got to play well. You've got to play better than your opponents. And uh, uh, and we've been right there in a lot of sets. We've we've been a part of some really really high level high level sets. And then there's been some sets where where uh, uh, we've not been good at all. And uh, we've given we get our given our opponents. Um, they've been in charge of the rallies one of our discussions today is is uh the number of what i would call empty swings that i'm not sure what we're trying to do or what our plan is and uh you know a three-quarter swing to the middle back is probably not going to be something that is going to bear a lot of fruit for us but it's certainly going to give our opponents the ability of transitioning with all of their options coming back at us. So we've got to be a little bit better, not a little bit. We've got to be quite a bit better, more consistently 
in the areas of the court that we're attacking. Um, and, but honestly, that kind of happens with with more success <laughs> in our practice gym, you know, it, because if not, then it then it all happens with just video for the matches that you just played. And, um, you know, we've got a really fast turn a turnaround coming here. I mean, yesterday was a day off, you know, for us. So there wasn't a lot of training there today. It's first day of classes, you know, so it'll be pretty short in the gym as they've got some other things that are kind of going on. Tomorrow will be a travel day and we'll play back to back days and then get back here. And our season opener is just a couple of days after that. And so there's not a lot of training opportunities right now. We're, we're kind of just, we're, you know, figuring some of this stuff out on the fly and, and watching film and in hotel ballroom suites and or, or planes and, um, uh, and then we'll get some stretches of being able to get in there, hopefully for healthy, be able to stack practice days on top of practice days, and uh, which which I think our team will need. A reminder that we've got a, a freshman uh, outside hitter, a freshman setter, uh, a freshman DS, and uh, essentially a freshman libero who's playing half the time. And so although we've got some really experienced players uh volleyball is a connectivity sport you know where it you know uh everybody's kind of playing off of each other you know one of the things that uh, you know i kind of think about was the end of the end of set one against stanford and uh a ball is kind of up in the air and you've got trinity and sage crashing into each other uh on who's sending the free ball over and we get called for a double um, well, those things don't happen a month from now. Well, they shouldn't happen a month from now. It's but mm -hmm. you know, kind of that hierarchy of who's taking what balls and balls that are in the seams and things that are happening fast and and what tempo we're we're running in transition with the setter and the hitter. That those things in our sport get worked out uh, with with time, and so. When you're asking how big the concern is, there's not a big concern. You don't. Nobody likes losing. Certainly, our, the record is not something that we're we're pleased with. But um, but it's not something that we're heavily concerned about. It's just let's get to work, and that process is actually fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about empty swings, and it seems to me uh, that the deeper the season goes, and the more that you have that film study, empty swings become less. Am, am I correct in this thinking? Because there's more of a um, more of a plan, for lack of a better way to describe that, that like this is where we should go with this as opposed to not really having film. Am I am I looking at empty swings? I mean, it's, it's a lot of things. It's 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 mindset is part of it. Right. Okay. Um, part of the scouting, you know, I mean, we we it's we gave I mean, you were there, you were traveling with us the amount of information that we gave on our opponents is about that. We gave almost nothing because we didn't have a whole lot of, of what their current team was. So you're almost going in a little bit blindfolded, not just us, our opponents was, were kind of in the same situation, you know, after our Louisville match, I mean, that, you know, Texas and Stanford had certainly some information on us that we, we didn't necessarily have on at least our first match, but, you're you're typically as a coach just not giving a ton of information to your teams early on mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that to say that we were at a disadvantage over them i i would guess that they were doing the exact same thing with with their teams uh, but uh you know things like where are you putting a ball when you don't have a kill those will be things that are added into a scouting report that our players just don't have right, right. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so there's an element of mindset. There's an element of reading the game that they've got to be better at. And then there is an element of, of us uh, training and giving information that will just naturally happen as we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. now, it seems and, and, and those are the reasons why you don't panic. Right. I mean, those are just the those are because you you you've got perspective of how we move teams forward and and, 
you know, and how, uh, you know, our injury situations shouldn't be permanent and then, you know, how we're going to develop our team and players. There, there's kind of a plan in that. And, and, and our players are hungry. They're driven. They, they, they're, uh, they're, they're rightfully ticked off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Is there a sense of excitement there uh, as well, knowing that there is still a lot of room for improvement that you've tested yourself for three matches? I assume uh, it feels like maybe that's something where you are excited to now work on everything that you've been able to see because of the level of competition. There's excitement for me because that's, you know, building teams. That's what I get really fired up about. And, mm -hmm. Um, uh, the, the, the team, you know, the team wasn't excited after the, in the locker room. I mean, that was a pretty bitter place and, uh, that they're not happy and, you know, and I'm, you know, it's not my job to make them happy, but I'm trying to give them a little bit of perspective and, and, um, it, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, what's the saying that, uh, uh, the, leadership is is giving uh others belief that tomorrow is going to be a better day right and so our, our our leaders have to have to believe that and and they do and uh uh and then you just get to work i i think you know carter made a point that you'd almost be when you're thinking about the longevity of a season this part is just so critical about learning Mm -hmm. especially before you get in the big 10 and you, you know you would rather be 0 and 3 and being in some really close matches and learning a lot for the practice gym than 3 and 0 and not learning anything now there's there's some in between there right and certainly you know there's opportunities of being winning a match two or three that we probably have let go but what I'm trying to state is the most critical thing right now is is finding out about your team and getting in the gym and getting better. And that is uh, and there is a wealth of information there on things that we're doing well and things that should be giving us confidence and things that we've got to tweak and other things that we've got to get quite a bit better at. And that process excites me. Yeah. Um, so we did see Caroline Crawford get her first start of the season on Monday against Stanford at, at yeah. middle blocker and didn't see Anna Smrek come on the court. How much more do you think the lineups may tweak and evolve? Obviously, I, I know you're you harvest the data and then you, you look at the data. But uh, why the change on Monday? And, and do you see more of uh, slight adjustments as we go on here? Uh well, I would anticipate us kind of it being fluid throughout the year, right? I mean, it's, uh, I, I, you know, one of the things we tell our players is, is, uh, you know, it, it would be close minded of myself to lock into a, a, a uh, into a lineup early and, and just be stubborn about that. It also would tell, send a message to the others that, hey, um, uh, you, you you know, it doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to get in. <clears throat> and I don't want, uh, I don't want our players feeling like, um, uh, you know, they have to accept their lot in life right now. They, I want them striving and working and growing and getting better and, and evolving. And if people are doing that, then it's always fluid. And, and there's also some players that I think can help us, even if they're not starting uh, being in some certain situations. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, and so I, I look at it as a as a as a positive more than anything that uh, that this thing continues to to evolve. And I would anticipate it unless players give me a reason for for not doing that. Okay. What were your thoughts on Pfizer Forum? I mean, we got to see a, a few matches there. The fans came out. Uh, what were your thoughts on on, on that event? And uh, second part of that question. Um, seems almost like it's kind of like a little a bit of a practice run perhaps for down the road could oh, yeah. milwaukee get uh, a final four yeah i was talking with stanford's coach kevin hamley um before our match on monday and he made a statement that uh the first part of our match with texas he he thought that was the highest level of volleyball he had seen opening weekend 
uh, before. I mean, it was just there was a lot of really good stuff. Texas just continued to keep it going. I mean, the the, the they gave us no room to breathe. Uh, very few errors, very few hitting errors. Uh, the the second part of that match, and they were digging a lot. They didn't give us a lot of service errors, and so uh, we were having a, a difficult time uh, transitioning. And uh, and and th they gave they played a very very clean clean match. Um, I would say most of our match with Stanford was really high level. You can tell, you know, that they had a um, they had a few more service errors as their philosophy is to just really really go and 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 the amount of pressure that our players were under uh, some of those just sick and nasty serves. I was really really pleased with the way that we've been passing the first three matches uh the serving is just so different than what it was um you know a decade ago just extremely different than what what it's ever been uh the matches have to to move a lot faster John. yeah it's yeah it and you and i spoke about that um uh the, we the amount of the amount of time between serves is too damn long we're asking too much out of our fans to be there for essentially seven or eight hours, no matter how good the volleyball is. Uh, we have to we have to do something about our replay. It's it, there's no reason why the in in out call should take four and a half minutes. It's an in out call that should be done very quickly. Part of that was Fox Fox's people that was you know new to our sport and and. The lingo of when the officials are talking to them hopefully we'll be able to move to a different replay system at some point hopefully uh that would certainly solve that but um but uh you know there are some really good rallies but we we need to get to a serve clock uh i'm convinced of that uh the officials need to be in charge of of it rather than the marketing people you don't wait till a uh, music stops before blowing the whistle. You don't wait till the light show ends before you blow the whistle. You jump on it. You keep this thing moving. And, uh, you know, I shouldn't be looking over in the fourth set in a close match with Stanford and seeing somebody in the first row yawning. But, uh, uh, but that's certainly what I saw. And um, uh, I think pace of play can, uh, can help that. We've got to find a way where every set – our goal should be 25 minutes and okay. we can't expect more matches to be on Fox and NBC and hopefully CBS joins the party at some point. Um, and, uh, it, and having sets, our first set against Texas went 50 minutes. You cannot wow. have a set going 50 minutes. And maybe we do some things where we get rid of as many coaches timeouts and we have, uh two technical timeouts one at eight one at 16 and and those be as long as tv wants it however long they want it to be able to sell the product but then each team gets one coach's timeout and that's 30 seconds and okay. uh so there's some things that we can do to shorten it up so okay so to kind of follow up on that um you're saying the time between serves is too i mean Pete, ba Pete barely has eight seconds to say anything, <laughs> you know, like, what do you, what, can you be a little bit more clear? I guess I'm the time between serves. So there's a, by the time people have a, so think about what they're doing on BNL and what we did with Louisville. There okay. was right when the rally ended, you had 15 seconds and and there was a timer, 15 seconds, and then the server would have the ball and they would have eight seconds to, to go. Um, uh, there's, there's rallies that are taking way longer than that. There's, there's, those things add up over time when you're having 200 points possibly in a, in a volleyball match, right? Right, right. Uh, floor wipers. We've got to be, you know, uh, you're watching VNL or Olympic matches and it's two, it's not just one kid that's going out there and end up turning over a towel to a player. It is two grownups going out to the same West spot and they're in and out of there. Like they're at Wimbledon shagging a tennis ball. Yeah. Right. So there's little things that we can kind of be doing that went over the course of 200 points that are just going gotcha. to make, you know, significant 
differences. And it's really important if we're wanting more of these matches to be on these big time channels that want to get in and get out of our, with our sport as fans do. Mm -hmm. Got it. And, and do you think Fiserv could be a viable candidate for a final four Milwaukee? God, yes. I mean, it's, uh, we've been working really hard first handful of years when we got here of trying to get a final four back to Madison, that became really important. And, and the city of Madison has been very, very invested, very, you know, tremendous presentations. Part of the problem is where you play the final four and where you can hold your convention and hotels. Everything's really spread out in Madison. That makes, that makes it a little bit tougher, you know, um, uh, and so although Madison is not given up and they're still working on that, we have been trying with, to get Milwaukee in the mix and Ryan Tice at Marquette has been certainly involved in that as well. And I have no idea why in the world, uh, Milwaukee's not been able to stack one, it's, okay. uh, you know, but we've, we have had the NCA committee at uh at our Pfizer match with Marquette last year in attendance of watching mm -hmm. that they were in attendance this uh this past week and uh there's hopefully at some point uh, we the state of Wisconsin earns the right I mean we've had two final fours here in the state of Wisconsin in the past and oh yeah both of them set attendance records um I feel like we the people here put on a pretty darn good show uh, when given that opportunity. Hopefully we don't have to wait too much longer for another final four to get here. Okay. I did put this out on, on X. If anybody had questions for coach, do you want to go through some rapid fire? Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, here we go. So you said you were pleased with the passing of the team. And uh, Michael asks, what can be done about our back row passing? Um, Cause you, you seem to think the opposite, obviously of Michael. I'm just looking at the numbers. It's it's right. a, um, and they're just the it's it's where and I don't blame anybody. And when you're down there on the floor, you you know there's matches that you're down on the floor, and there's other matches that you're up high. And just what is happening with some of these balls? You're just they're you're doing nothing. That how I would describe it with some of these serves is almost like a batter at a you know, that is, you know, in baseball, that's at the plate and you've got two strikes and this pitcher just throws something just absolutely filthy at you. And you're just fighting for your life to just foul it off. There's no way in the world you're going to get a hit off of this particular pitch. And man, what Stanford was throwing at us was the best serving I've ever seen. Uh, one of their things is they're going to have to get in at a higher percentage if they're going, in my opinion, to um, uh, to win the whole thing. They're 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 just they're giving away too many points um, as as they did last year. But the serves that they're getting in are just so many of them are just really really filthy. What Kurt was throwing at us. Um, and what their opposite, I'm drawing a blank Harvey. on what her name was. What's that? Jordan Harvey. Harvey. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, those those will be two of the top four or five serve, servers we, we see all year long. Mm. And, um, and and so I, I saw our players fighting and battling and trying to keep that up. I saw a couple of balls that Trinity passed that were going out of bounds, that were sailing out of bounds. And... You know, and and so what are we going to do about that? I, I don't know. She just never seen anything like this, and mm -hmm. uh, and so you're going to help build her confidence and and try to you know you're reacting to a serve. Uh, you've got to make a decision on whether you're going to pass that serve and in about a third of a second, and she's never had her eyes haven't had to respond to that. On a slower ball, you can see her technique is really good, really sound. Um, she's got very good platform. She'll put on some good balls with her hands. Um, 
uh, her issue is 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 the speed of the speed of play of some of the serves and she and that's i work and that's just practice and so um i'm not really concerned about that sarah's passing numbers are the best they've ever been she's passing at a really really high level and texas put almost every ball on her yeah lola is doing a really good job of passing the ball orzel's numbers are a little bit down primarily because she hasn't practiced in two weeks and uh but i'm not really concerned about that uh sage is doing a a, a good job she's battling some really uh nasty six serves and so uh i i feel pretty good that especially uh, you know where we're at passing um we, we've we've been we've been pretty good uh two people joe and fresh were wondering about the two libero system and uh, if you plan on sticking with that yeah uh i i don't know uh that's that's a great question um it's a question we're asking ourselves uh i think um uh i think information will will certainly dictate what we do i don't think there's a right or a wrong i mean i i don't i mean clearly you, you see ucla men's team winning a national championship doing both um there's no reason not to have um your um uh, sorry i'm distracted by a no, let and give me a call right now um <laughs> the uh your what i've learned is it doesn't affect the flow you know that's been yeah. the information we've gotten from those guys okay and so uh, i think the numbers it, or, or their teammates you know when you're asking the information to, from the people that are out there and you got people coming in and out is that you know what is that and it, it's the players that are involved in it feel that's fine it, it took the scrimmage to to kind of get a feel for it, uh, and uh, you know, all of them would rather be out there six rotations and three, right? I mean, or than half the time, but uh, but you know, passing numbers and and uh, dig to convert numbers, serving out of system setting, uh, and then you know, coverage those things, all those things that we, we've got, we've got information as we start gathering that information that'll kind of lead us to the direction we go okay a couple quick questions because either lauren carlini or dana redke is calling you um <laughs> uh joey had a couple of interesting questions i'm sorry i couldn't get to everybody's questions today but uh two of them uh it, what is something with the lineup that you've wanted to try in a match but haven't been able to that's his first question so lineup what's something you've always wanted to try that you haven't been able to and then he asked another one he goes if you were attempt to break the world record for attendance, where would you do it and who would you play? Like, obviously, you'd have to go on the road to break that. His suggestions, Texas at Cowboy Stadium, Penn State in Happy Valley, Florida at the Swamp, or somewhere else. Huh. I already uh, know my answer, what I would want to see, but. Uh. I don't know if we're talking about football stadiums right now, but there is some discussions about possibly going down south and doing something in maybe an NBA arena or something. I mean, and maybe doing a home and home with one of those southern schools that we might have already played. So th there's some discussions about trying to get into some big, cool environments there. Football stadium, I don't know if we're doing that. I, I just, I, it, it's a, um, it, I, I don't think it's conducive to good volleyball. It's it's a spectacle, and the spectacle has been done, and I'm happy that it was done. It was cool. Would have been cool if we were involved in something like that. But I don't think it. I don't know if you're going to be able to top that, and that's kind of the standard. And I think it's. I don't think you'll see anybody really doing it at kind of that level. So. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'm always willing to listen, but I, I don't know. What do we want to do that I haven't done yet? Um, uh, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to get one of my L sides. I'd like to get all my L sides a little healthier right now, and, and uh, that, that would certainly help. I'd like there would be some, maybe some specific uh, blocking situations that maybe we'd be doing uh, if um, uh, that I can totally see us doing as we're moving forward. Okay. Well, Coach Sheffield, thank you for another week of the Kelly Sheffield Show, and I'll see you as we get ready for the Big Ten Big 12 Challenge. Thanks, guys.
All right. Thanks for listening to the John Cast podcast. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, do all the things. Uh, leave a review too. Reviews help as well. So thanks for listening to the podcast.